Hi guys, this is my channel about home brewing. If you want to learn more with me about beers and home brewing, please consider becoming a subscriber. This is a follow up video. About 10 months ago, I did a split batch where I tested uh, how the fermentation would end, or more like how would the result be, and what would be the difference if you fermented the same wort with baker's yeast or bread yeast, what you want to call it with beer yeast, in this case ale yeast. So I did a split batch where I fermented half with SO4, common dry yeast, and the rest of the half with like common Swedish dry bread yeast, baker's yeast. If you haven't watched the first video, I'll put a card up and a link down below so you can go and watch that one. The consensus of the viewers down in the comments and who contacted me after want to see how this beer was after aging, after conditioning. So this is like 10 months later. This is fermented with the bread yeast and this is fermented with the SO4 ale yeast. And this has been sitting cold conditioning side by side for the exact same temperature. And these are at the same temperature now because they have been sitting out here now for like a half hour heating up for this experiment. So guys, if you are ready, let's do this. I'm gonna mark one of the glasses, which should we mark? Let's mark the SO4 glass. So the glass with SO4 is marked with the tape. Don't have to mark the bottle. I will put a note on it so we don't forget okay s o 4 s o 4 so i'll put an extra note on it here on the stem on the foot sorry s o 4 okay so glasses are marked up if you haven't seen the first video i would talk just a little bit about the beer but this ain't really about the beer because this is more like the gist because I brewed a black IPA, an old grain black IPA, and I just continued to sparge, like rinse in the grains after, and I, and I measured during sparging the gravity, how much sugar is coming out from the grains, and when I dropped under like 10, 10, I stopped sparging, and that gave me actually 14 liters of very weak wort. Uh, maybe, I don't remember, like 10, 12-ish, maybe something like that. It's a very weak wort. So I boiled that down to 8 liters and added a kilo of dry malt extract. And that gave me an OG of 10.51. And uh, I added some Cascade and some Villamette tops, two additions with both of them. And... Then I chilled it down and fermented it with, in two different vessels. One with the SO4 yeast and one with the bread yeast. So there wasn't really very much love into uh, the beer or the recipe of the beer. Because mainly the love that day got into the black IPA. I have a... Uh, maybe I don't. And that was the big black IPA which I did which ain't the best one I did. I will put a card up in the link down below to the playlist of my uh, black IPA mini series and there you will find me uh, tasting the original beer. It's not my best black IPA. Also in that series you will find my best black IPA recipe. But let's get on with this beer. So SO4 after 10 month. It's very carved. SO4 glass. Okay. Okay, so this has been sitting uh, at like Ten, 12, 12 degrees Celsius. I will put that up in 
Fahrenheit. So it's, it has continued carving in the bottle. And uh, the S04 one ended up 1014. So yeah, there were some residual sugars. After this video, please go back and watch the first video. You will see there's major difference. Look at that. <laughs> Mushroom head. Okay, so the bread yeast. The bread yeast was, was much more hungrier. It ate all the way down to 1012, which ain't, of course, not amazing. Okay, so this one ain't as carved. So maybe uh, the radicial sugars there in the SO4 one have been eaten up already. So this looks much better. Um, do you want to hear which I preferred in the first taste? If you have watched that video, you already know. Okay, so appearance wise, they are both like crystal clear, lovely looking. Of course, the head on this is monstrous. Okay, so this is the bread one. So it's a beautiful looking amber colored beer. Hope you can see it. It's like something like that maybe, yeah. And uh, of course we have this monstrous head. So this one has clearly continued to ferment. The SO4 one fluctuated were qu quick and uh, so uh, there were some sugars left obviously to be eaten up by the yeast should we give it a nose i really need to uh, get rid of some of this head okay lost some head there let's see if we can pour some more you see very well carved but it's looking better now so okay here you have the s041 and the bread yeast one okay let's give the bread yeast one a nose okay Not a massive aroma, but it's some maltiness, like fruity aroma, but yeah, it's not a kick in the face. Okay, the S04 one. Okay, this is a little bit fruitier, I think. Sorry, I have to double check. So a little bit more aroma on this one. Nothing massive, of course. It's like sweet maltiness, fruity. Okay, which should we try first? Okay, let's go for the SO4 one. No, let's not. Let's go for the, the bread yeast one. Cheers, guys. It has some sweetness um, and um, it's fruity. Almost like a little uh, wine taste, just a hint. Um, like a a strong wine taste to it. Also like some cider notes to it. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, some green apples. So I guess that's what I'm picking up. 
uh, when I said like wine cider, it's um, it's gotten a little appley. Just a hint, and uh, that could be um, really signs of oxidation as well. That we have some um, acetaldehyde in the, the beer. Okay, so let's try the SO4. <sighs> Cheers, guys! Okay, so much better mouthfeel on this one. Of course, it's more carbed. So that will kick the beer around the mouth really better. Uh, okay, spoiler. The first time I preferred the SO4 one. And uh, yeah, you know I'm gonna say it. I still prefer the SO4 one because this is so much cleaner and uh, this is not. And It's not like a bad beer, it ain't, but uh, I do prefer the SO4 one, because... It has stored so much better than that one. Um, it hasn't uh, got the, uh, the green apple and a uh, better mouthfeel. Of course, that could be... <sighs> this has... A good amount of carbonation so but as you saw this were clearly like over card not a major issue it wasn't a gusher something like that rusty Russell homebrew cheers everyone knows of rusty the gusher okay I don't remember these beers as like any good actually this weren't so much about the uh, the brewing of the beer. This was just to keep it exact to do the experiments between the uh, two different G strains. And this has really improved during aging. So this is quite nice beer now. And uh, I think that this one might have done the same because this was much more like I don't want to say dirty but you know like has what much more like a saison spiciness uh, and I uh, got some comments that some viewers had had some success with the the uh, baker's yeast and uh, I'm I don't say that you can't use it and after aging as i said i i think this really has improved of course you had some appliness there but that's just a hint it's not more than you find in many like macrologers this is just a hint of apples to it after this and it has cleared up very nicely don't know if you can see it in this light condition but i already shined through it and um, that saison spiciness is almost gone. I do have some bottles left from this experiment. I don't know if you really want me to age it even further. Because I haven't been aging it now for like 10 months. So I think that's a really good test. And it really improved these beers. Of course, I've been aging them in a steady temperature of 12 degrees in a wine cooler I have. Of course, it's no wine in it, only beers. So this has been uh, sitting there for your waiting. So the go back to them, the SO4. No, really got that, that, that 
British mild fruitiness via ESB. Really nice this one has turned out, the SO4 one. So simple, maybe it's not so simple because yeah, it's a black IPA in the bottom and yeah, but you understand me? I hope so. And this one with the bread yeast. They're like two different beers. And uh, the more I drink of this one, the better I think it is. So like, regarding the, um, the fruity esters, I think this is a little bit cleaner, but as I said, it has the uh, small hint of uh, apples and maybe hint left of that like spiciness from the saison, not from the saison, like saison spiciness. This is so British. Okay, so um, I did get some. Uh, okay, I don't know really now which is which, so I won't top it up. Yes, I know, because this is like foamy. Not to be sure, to be exactly sure, I won't top them up. So I also got in the comment, I think someone mentioned that this was like bullshit. You can't sense any difference or this is bullshit. I always use baker's yeast. I just share my opinions guys and my findings on this channel. And uh, there's no like truth here. I can't say what you taste and how this experiment will go for you. But what can we draw for this? If you are using bread yeast, you, you can make beer and good tasting beer. From this experiment, it says really that you should age it for quite a while. But and uh, yeah, the, we already know that we could make beer from alias so maybe we don't have to go down that route so guys what do you think please comment down below should we uh, age the beer even further do you want to see a third part of this like mini series i won't call it that but do you want to see even more aging should we give it uh, like another five six months or Comment down below. And of course, have you brewed anything with Baker's Yeast? Please comment down below. Join the discussion. This is all about learning from each other. So I guess this is like the end for this video. So cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber. If you want even more content and recipes and uh, yeah, more like a vlog style and uh, more updates, there's my Patreon page to check out and of course, all of the bat catalog of my other videos. So cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.